Every week we wrap up Bullseye with a pop culture recommendation from me. It's the outshot. Once in a while, I have to kind of talk my three-year-old out of a dream. You can't tell a kid that age that dreams aren't real because to a kid that age, dreams are real. So much of their energy is dedicated to parsing the world, to figuring out what's going on. And that's what dreams are for, reconfiguring and reconsidering our experiences, making ways of understanding the stuff that surrounds us. Dreams are real to kids. They're essential. And there's no book that captures that feeling of a dream, that feeling of synthesizing the world, learning to master it, like In Night Kitchen. Have you read that book, Maurice Sendak? Maybe when you were a kid or to your kids? It's not quite as famous as Where the Wild Things Are. I think it's even more amazing. James Gandolfini read it out loud at Sendak's 80th birthday party. Did you ever hear of Mickey? How he heard a racket in the night and shouted, Quiet down there, and fell through the dark, out of his clothes, past the moon, and his mama and papa sleeping tight, into the light of the night kitchen. The magic of Sendak is how deeply he accesses a child's experience, the way they feel the world. The actual story of In the Night Kitchen is very simple. Our hero, Mickey falls into this dream world. He finds some bakers, he helps them bake, and then he slides back into his bed. But it's so much more than that. The dream world is a city, kind of New Yorkish, but it's also a kitchen. The skyline is built from boxes and cartons and jars of packaged food. Towers and crests are hand mixers and bunches of asparagus. It's a world populated by Sendak's favorite subject, food, and it's built to resemble his own immigrant childhood, full of little marginal references that give it a powerful specificity. Food is Sendak's favorite subject, but it is children's favorite subject, too. Food is a nourishing symbol of familial love. It's a source of pleasure and sustenance. But for little kids, it's also fraught. I mean, I served cheese tortellini the other night. My kids would not touch it. It scared them. As a kid learns to eat, food is both nourishment and danger. Actually, the whole story of In the Night Kitchen is fraught at the edges. Mickey meets three bakers, each one of them a round, mustachioed match for each other and for Oliver Hardy. They have an uncanny quality, dreamlike in that their humanity is blurred. And while they are kind of goofy dunderheads, they're also trying to literally bake Mickey into a cake. I mean, you probably remember what they chant. Milk in the batter, milk in the batter, stir it, scrape it, make it, bake it. The bakers have toothbrush mustaches, and they're flinging around this cylinder of kosher salt. Sendak's family were Polish Jews. It's hard not to miss the historical resonances. Of course, most kids won't think of the Holocaust. Instead, they'll feel that sickening, pleasing feeling of a sensual threat. It's one that I remember from playing cannibal as a kid. To become food is both terrifying and strangely thrilling. But right in the middle of the steaming and the making and the smelling and the baking, Mickey poked through and said, I'm not the milk, and the milk's not me. I'm Mickey. You know, they say that people censored the book because it shows Mickey naked. But more than that, it shows him being richly, vividly physical, interacting with the world, shaping the world, actually, without any mediation, squirming in his flight suit made out of wet dough, kneading and punching and pounding and pulling. Mickey builds himself an airplane, and then he dives physically into the milk, immersing himself completely. Mickey the Milkman dived down to the bottom singing, I'm in the milk and the milk's in me. God bless milk and God bless me. Mickey's small. He's in a strange and kind of terrifying world, but he leaps right in, literally. He's faced with this baffling problem, these confused, 
bizarre adults, and he flies and jumps and pours and slides home in triumph. This kid Mickey is the embodiment of the courage and joy of childhood, the spirit of a child running naked through the living room, laughing uncontrollably, screaming a song that he just made up. In our dreams, we collect our thoughts, order the miscellany, learn from what we've seen and felt. Fear, joy, metaphor, fact, they're all equally real in dream world. And to grow, to rise, we put it all together into a coherent picture of ourselves and of the world around us. That's what Mickey does in In the Night Kitchen, and he does it triumphantly. The panel that thrills me the most, even now as a 36-year-old, has Mickey standing proudly naked on top of the milk bottle. His measuring cup is a jaunty hat, and in huge red letters, he lets out a cry. Cock-a-doodle-doo! We could all have a bit more Mickey. That's my outshot. And that's why, thanks to Mickey, we have cake every morning.